Hello, hello, uh, listeners new and listeners returning. Uh, welcome back to the Gaming Blender, the podcast of hypothetical games. I'm, of course, here with my partner in crime, as always, Matthew. Matthew, how are you? I'm very well, Scott. It's lovely to be here. <laughs> Yes, it is a bit like being on a game show. Uh, we do appear to be slipping into more game showy uh, tropes as we as we go on. I'm not sure. I, if f- it, I feel like I need a conveyor belt with like a microwave and a, and yeah, a BMX yeah, yeah. going past me, and just <laughs> just like any of these could be yours. What was that show called? I don't know. Game show. I, from the, it was it was sort a, of late '90s, early 2000s game shows. Yeah, very similar I, I feel. It. And and it was always they won like a car in a kitchen, but they were an entire family. So you kind of go, what, what, so or two families. Yeah. It's like, who, got, who gets the kitchen? I remember. I, I, I they don't, don't see those sort of, sort of shows anymore. No, because they're, they're awful. They're terrible. Uh, they just filled up the middle of the day. You only remember I them really from when you're a kid. Liked them. <sighs> you only remember them because when you're a kid, you have nothing to do, so you watch it. That's exactly why. Anyway, back to gaming. Um, <laughs> sorry, listeners. Occasionally, we do, of course, fall into nostalgia of mine of mine and Matthew's uh, minds. Um, Matthew, how's your how's your gaming week or two weeks it's, been? It's good. It's good. It's been a good two weeks. However, I'm looking for the next thing to grab me. I'm still dipping in and out of Zelda, but I decided to dip back into City Skylines, a few sort of creation ones. I I'm, I'm trying to sort of I'm waiting for something to really make me excited. I've started watching a few Elden Ring let's plays, which is satisfying and also not satisfying because i watch it and i go oh i should have done that oh i missed mm. those because i played it yeah. with you and I, I could get the sense that y- y- we we used a mod to make it co-op mm. um and i was sort of guiding around going now to here now to this one now to this one yeah and like oh my god why are they so this is so hard and horrible it's like yes you've experienced nothing yet keep going yeah keep going it was, it was very much a guided tour of elden ring well, it wasn't even labeled it was the starting area scott it was, it was a limb yeah. grave <laughs> It was it. What that's big for me. Um, <laughs> it is a big starting area. I'll give you that. L- listeners, I'm not very good with games like the From Software type games where it's ridiculously hard. Um, so, but how has your gaming week been? I, I, while I wait for something to grab my attention, uh, what have I been doing? Um, I have been dipping back into Total War Warhammer, um, which I'm a very big fan of. Um, they're bringing out another one called Total War Pharaoh, which I'm not. I'm it's not interesting. The Total about. War. I watched an, an, an um, analytical video, and it, mm. it does feel like as the, the the love of Total War Warhammer has gone up, the historical ones have dropped off. And I haven't mm. played a historical one since Rome Two. I don't think. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I I think that's partly due to Warhammer. I think if you like most of the stuff, anyway. You go for the Warhammer one because generally you are interested in that stuff too. And the mm. historical chunk is, is a much smaller audience now, which is interesting. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how they treat it going forward. Yeah, yeah. But I think everyone is waiting for Medieval 3. Um, um, everyone, everyone's just waiting for, for that, to, that to come, which hopefully will come at some point. Um, what I was going to ask, ask you, Matthew, before we get started is um, I was thinking the other day, I was chatting to my, my wife about the best video game moments that I've ever had because you know listeners I'm sure you know most of you will be uh, video game players one of the reasons we play video games is for those those glorious moments where um, there's this massive sort of surge of emotion because you've achieved something or the or the game makes you um, you know m- you know makes you profoundly feel some emotion whether that's you know fright or sadness or, or joy or you know, whatever it might be um, Matthew have you you got one of those one of those moments to share? I've got two. I think I've got two. I was listening mm-hmm. to your description. I think one of them fits it, one of them doesn't. I think one of my. Well, I think one of the moments that sticks with me, despite the fact I jumped off the game and didn't actually enjoy the game that much, was the first time you step out of the prison in Oblivion. Yes. Um, and I th- thought that was just took my breath away phenomenal. I could not believe what I was seeing. And then mm-hmm. I tried to hit something with the combat and hated the combat. <laughs> but <laughs> in terms of like stepping out and going, oh my God, look at all this world i can explore this looks amazing this feels fantastic um actually i've got two other ones because the other yeah. one is very very specific um to us but then there's but the other one was um in a shadow shadow of mordor where well, there was essentially there is and spoilers for shadow of Mordor coming up you have the nemesis system so you fight against people and then you develop a specific like storyline with people and then right at the end your villain that you've had the most amount of fights with, which for me was this random orc holding a knife who was rubbish, but for some reason kept backstabbing me and winning. Mm. And and just when finishing me off, he appeared as the final boss. 
And I remember that kind of with this moment of absolute glee that I was like, yes, I get to rip you to shreds because I knew that yeah. he was rubbish. Yeah. He was rubbish. He was my nemesis. And I was like, right, time to absolutely wipe the floor with you. And my final yeah. one, not to rattle on too long, was when we were playing GTA Online together in the small period where I actually enjoyed that, yeah. where we were playing a level and we tried it about six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. We were singing forever. We were getting wound up by it. We had to steal a plane from a hangar. Was this one of the heists? It wasn't one of the heists, but it's like one of the heists. It was one of the okay. missions that was similar to us. We had to steal a plane from a hangar, fly it, land it somewhere else. And we tried it, and we kept trying it, kept trying it, kept trying it. And finally, um, finally, I think we got around. You were trying to cover me while I got in the plane, and you'd jump in the plane, jump onto the wing, jump back in, and, and then we'd take off and go, ha, we got away. And I remember we took off. And we were like, yes, we've done it. We got out of here. We've done it. We've done it. And then I, controlling the plane, suddenly felt the controls go a bit weird. I went, Scott. And you're like, yes, we've done it. Everybody will fail. We've done it. Scott. Yeah. Scott. It's like, I don't think I have any engines anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this I point where you went, oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> I- <laughs> Yeah, I, I recall we didn't we didn't successfully complete that mission, did we? Because we we crashed. no, I think we gave up after that because then, then they just collapsed into the sea. It's very awkward, yeah, but we just when GTA obviously if something goes wrong, generally one of you goes, "Well, bye bye, I have a parachute." Yeah. yeah, and I believe we both died. Um, oh, that was that was very funny. Um, but yes, listeners, please do uh, please do make a, a note in the comments if you want to you know let us know what your favourite gaming moment was. What is yours? What is yours? Oh, Scott? What is mine? Um, uh, I think so. For, for those who haven't played the original Kotor game, the Knights of the Republic game um, for Star Wars, it is the you know, spoilers. The is the moment where you the, uh... are revealed as almost the main. You are the main baddie. You know, it it is it, revealed that basically your, your character has a sort of space amnesia, um, yes. Star Wars amnesia, and it turns out that you are the big bad from sort of like. the almost like the, the prequel bit of the of the game um because when i was like when i first played the game when i was like 13 12 it my jaw like fell off i think I'm that like, is a twist no it's way. overdone now it's overdone in sense yeah. of like you were really the villain especially in horror films where uh, or yeah. horror games where you wake up and it's like i have no memory of how i got here it's like well you've definitely caused this then yeah yeah, yeah. yes yes you are the evil doctor that has caused all the all the all the zombies to appear all the yes. monsters to appear um but anyway We'll crack on with the with the podcast because that's been eight minutes of us blithering. Eight minutes of fluff. Um, I think that's a I think that's a record. Record, um, record fluffing. I've dropped so my pen. Welcome back to our uh, return listeners. For any new listeners, um, this is the Gaming Blender podcast. What we like to do is um, mix a randomised uh, selection of uh, genres, and mechanics, and narratives, and smush them all together and try and create a game in what will probably be slightly over half an hour because we blithered on a bit. Um, uh, slightly under we and, might nail it and i think matthew and i usually do quite well given our very strict time limits um you know i, I think we can compete with the best of the gaming industry's idea people oh, I, I, I think the last of us is just people. chump change at this stage compared to it, what we create i agree i agree um matthew i, I did notice you drop your pen so don't yes, um, thank you you. Know, you, d- you didn't get away with that one if you're watching um, on the youtube channel you'll just see me slowly like smoothing <laughs> to the side <laughs> and dropping out well, of shot Almost like you're doing that thing where you pretend, to, pretend you're in an elevator. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we should, we should crack on. So, um, Matthew, what I would like you to do is um, select a genre. And the way you're going to do this is with a lovely dice roll, as we've started doing. We've doing started dice doing rolls. dice because we can't be trusted. No, we can't. Um, or at least I can't be trusted to this is true. not forget what I've already done. Um, so I'd like, you, or I'd like you to... No, wrong. You're not choosing anything. I'm rolling the dice. No, I'm not. I'm just uh, saying I'm roll. Rolling. I'm just saying roll, baby. I am rolling. You have got number eight. Okay. Would you and like you know to roll number I, eight? You know is? how I like to do it. You know how I like to do it. Do it all. Yeah, do it's it very all. true. Hang on. I need to. I need to take. I need to take a note. Okay. And we also have number for a mechanic. We have number thirty-two and number thirty-five. Very interesting. What okay. Got there. Okay. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Okay, so what you have to make, Matthew, is a puzzler. Puzzler. So a puzzle game with a co-op focus. 
i.e. It Takes Two, or Overcooked. Okay. And Episodic Storytelling. A la, uh, a la the Telltale Games. Okay. Hmm. Episodic storytelling is... Well, actually, I suppose that's different. I'm th- I was thinking of narrative storytelling there, actually, where it's something like um, Until Dawn, but it's not episodic mm. storytelling. So in theory, this could get released in chunks. It could get released in chunks. It's interesting when they release it in chunks, though, because there are certain ones that I thought were really interesting, like that when they released Hitman in chunks, where they had one map mm. per... Yeah. Um, this, it was about six or seven maps, and they released each map individually, and I thought it was quite a cool idea, because mm. then you'll, you'll really feel like you're getting value and have something. Anyway, and then obviously puzzle puzzle games... I mean, it's not a party game. It's a puzzle game. So a puzzle mm-hmm. game would be something like maybe... Um, so the journey on with, what, what would you say is a good example of a puzzle game? Yeah, I mean, I I, Portal. I, I, Portal's a puzzle game. Yeah, Portal's a puzzle game. I mean, I don't... I don't I'm not typically a, a puzzle player. Um, I think it's because I'm an idiot, and so puzzle <laughs> players... <laughs> puzzle players make me feel stupid. You just, you just have feel... that expression on of the dog, like, just staring back at you. And, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking at, looking at but it's a very simple puzzle going oh i think you know my the sort of my peak of puzzling is the skyrim puzzles which are the simplest puzzles in the world find lever pull lever basically you know match animal to animal and pull lever i think i think my daughter who is you know coming up on two would be able to do the skyrim puzzles i'm not gonna lie i googled a lot of them Ah, go on then. <laughs> okay, so hang on. So episodic. I think the challenge here is finding something that suits episodic without just cheating it and saying, oh, we'll release it in chunks. Mm. I, quite like, I want to be able to integrate that in because a co-op, co-op actually f- suits a puzzle game because does, you can yeah. make puzzles designed about two people. Like, I mean, I mean, on the very basic level, hold down button over here mm. and yeah. So I have, I have an idea. Go I hit have, me have, with have, it. So... Archaeology suits puzzlers. You so love archaeology. We've done archaeology oh, before. Because archaeology. we did we did a puzzle game with archaeology yeah. that was a roguelike. Do you remember that? Uh, we did. Yes. It was the <laughs> one where you it was your wife complimented you for how good it was. It was the one where you had to start off with a party and it was a roguelike, and each puzzle you solved, you could potentially lose people. Yes. No, we did so, do that. In the nicest way. No. We can't do no, archaeology. Okay, no, no, that's fine. It's, it's good that you're the resident historian because otherwise we just end up making the same game over and over again. Um, so okay, trains? Scra- no. <laughs> there is there are there is no situation in which you can apply trains to puzzles. Yeah, you could. This could be shunting. No shunting. You've got to get it in the right. Okay. And you know, listeners, don't enable him by writing anything in the comments that will make him start thinking about trains again. So here's a thought. Go on. Do oh no, you did say co-op focus rather than two player because I was about to say does do, do we have to say for the puzzles you're working with each other? You can make it two player. You can you can just make it solely one player or two player. No, no, but I meant as in working against put people working against each other rather oh, than I co-op. See. You said co-op for puzzles. Yeah, co-op kind of if it was multiplayer. Yeah, exactly. Co-op it's kind of insinuates one. that you are sort of working together, but then you get you get head to head co-op. That, that that's a that's a thing. So you could you could nuance it's, it in that. Yeah, way. it is a thing. I think we 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 might be stretching it slightly. I think unless, that there is unless you uh, okay. How about this? Unless you do some sort of puzzle where you can choose to either work together or go against one another. There are ways to solve the puzzles both together and yes. singularly, and you can decide at any point to either help each other or stab each other in the back. Do you see what I mean? Okay, maybe, so let's, maybe yeah, like so that. I see. So it's a betrayal yeah. element. So may, maybe you, I don't know, you know, it doesn't have to be archaeology or something like that, but maybe there are puzzles in which um, you are two very untrustworthy people who, you know, really are sort of forced together. I have an and idea. you can choose to either help each other or not. Go on. So this, oh, this is just based on that co-op focus thing about mm. the untrustworthiness. How about you have a puzzler where you have to work together, but you have an end goal, which is money, which is loot, which is something. And what it and what you do is you that will always be split if you get there together. Or, obviously, when you get it, you get all of it. Now, you know, in Suicide Squad, in both the comics, the films, and the adaptations, etc., they have a chip in the back of the head that means that 
they can be the head can be exploded mm. um, if they run away. Let's say you have that for each other, but you, you have blow to, each other up. You have to gauge whether you can. Um, you have to gauge whether you can um, get by without the other person in the re- rest of the puzzles. Oh, I see. So, so... Then you can get all the loot. Okay. So, so okay, right. I see what you mean. Yeah. So, so you, so you could you could have these very intricate puzzles where you never know how close you are to the end. You never know yeah. whether you've reached the final goal or not. Yes. So there's always lots of twists and turns and lots of almost like false peaks. And if you and, and if you had puzzles that have multiple solutions, mm. you could have this way. Say you have to get somewhere cross a river or something like that. And you're like, okay, well, the only way I can see doing it is with two people. Mm. And then the the other one of you goes, yeah, as an idea I've got, I only need one person here and then I can get all the loot for myself. It it could, it could lead to a lot of games being very, very short. It could do. Uh, Because you, but I think maybe you just boom. (laughs) Look around. Nope. Can solve that. But maybe you start it with an, um, very, Two player focused co op focused puzzles. What if and it's then not? They, they open out to become more like self. What if it's not? Um, what if it's not that you kill them? What, what if it's that you disable them for a certain period of time? So then that person isn't then out of the game. That person then yeah. basically, one person then basically gets a massive head start. So you, you. That could be it because then maybe the person goes, right, okay, I know there are, I know there's one puzzle left. Mm. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to back myself that I can solve it. Yeah. So I'm going to disable them in the penultimate puzzle. I'm going to charge forward, get into the next puzzle room, and hope I can solve it before they can catch up. Because you might have some really awkward moments where your mm. partner catches back up with you, like looks good. What the hell was that about? I'm going to disable mm. you, and disables them, and then realizes they can't solve the puzzle either, and then goes, "Yeah, we kind of need each other." Whoops. Yeah. So you've got a window you can disable. You kind of maybe. You get in, you have a minute to sort of zoom around the room and you can move around freely. Mm. And in that, that minute, you, after that minute, you get ten, five seconds where that's your opportunity to freeze your, your uh, partner. Yeah, you could say maybe there's like a, they've got like an elect- electrical collar or something and then you yeah. can activate it and then they basically are immobilized for a certain amount of time while you can then do the puzzle. I like this. this is, but then the puzzle itself, I, what do you think the puzzle itself is? I see it as like a portal thing of, and this might be because I played a lot of Zelda recently, of can you cross this area? Can you get it across? And then you kind of have building um, elements. I think, I think you can do that. I think you make it as wide as possible. You do as many as many puzzles as physically possible and as many different types to keep it Very. fresh and to give you a lot of variation. Um, well, then, and, but then let's steal that. Let's steal that element of building blocks you can mel mm. again sorry stealing from zelda but i can't not because that's what i'm mm. imagining but you can mm. meld anything to anything so you go into a room and there's a load of scattered like items and maybe there's a, a fan that's in a vent that you can go okay well i can use that fan to create something or i can mm. so just a load of puzzle pieces you can whack them all together however you see fit but in order but you can only maybe you can only use five objects each okay so that way you essentially look at it and you go right and that means also it opens it up for not just be co-op you can have four player five player six player whatever it is because you can look at it and go right i can only meld five objects together that one that one that one okay that leaves me one short i'm going to need the other one whereas mm. your partner goes I, I can make this work with three mm. okay yeah i think that could, i mean how would you we have to police that in some way in the narrative and make a reason for why Yes, you can only choose so. five. You know, you can only choose five things. I think it, it it would depend on the narrative. But I think one way that this could work is if it's a little bit like Squid Game, where it's some sort of competition, right? And where it's not just, do you know what I mean? Like, as in, like to to build the the reason why. I don't mean the same sort of Squid Game as though as though like people are kept there against their will, whatever sort of. That. Perhaps it's a this is a because we're not we're not at this point saying there's a there's a threat to life. For these no no it's kind of it's kind moment. of a bit it's kind of just as you say squid gamey game show but without that threat to so life so i think the should... narrative will define how much yeah we fill in the backstory around it i mean it's almost more of a more of a random fall it's closer to fall guys at the moment really than squid game yeah um 
where do we build in the episodic? How I suppose that might be narrative as well, I guess. It could be narrative. Um, I, I see it as maybe the puzzle rooms themselves. Maybe you have styles and um, themes. So mm. if the base game one is uh, it's a bit like with Hitman, where you said we release it in like this is this is the map. Obviously, there are loads and loads of puzzles. Each one releases with tons of puzzles, so people don't get short change. But then the next episode is like here's the jungle theme, or here's mm. the desert themed one. So I think that's that's a way around it. I think the narrative is the next step, and then we work out what we can and can't add. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Should we add a should we, should we do narrative now? Yes. Okay. So um I was about to ask you once again to do a <laughs> uh, do a number selection with realized it was a dice roll. <laughs> it's a dice roll. Uh okay. So you have number seven, which oh number seven is the riddle. Love oh, a good mystery that's a good it one. is the plot for you. The riddle. Okay, I think that, that, that could work quite well. I have an idea. Go on. So, are you familiar with the concept of aliens? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, now what we're saying is two, a giant dome lands somewhere on Earth. Yes. And people go and investigate it. All they find when they go and investigate it is that there seems to be a hint towards great treasures inside. There are paintings, there are carvings around it. But when you go into it, you start to understand, <clears throat> you start to work out that um, that you're being challenged in order to get these gifts, to get these to get these achievements. Um, I've just realised one thing that we do need to clarify is what's the what's the what do we get for winning? What's, what's the end goal? Yeah. What's the end goal? But okay, so but the, these domes drop, and then what they're doing is they encourage people are encouraged to come in and do their challenges. And they win gifts, they win money, they win stuff like that, etc. So as people are challenging it, then say this is where the episodic bit comes in. Another dome lands in a different area of the world. And another dome, and another dome, and another dome. People are encouraged to challenge, come in and take on these challenges, take on these events. Um, they're not life-threatening. What they are doing is they are aliens are watching us and watching how we behave and how we interact with each other and are gaining information much like, oh, actually, or it could be AI. It could be this. Could be an AI thing where AI is watching us. AI has created these domes and has mm. encouraged us all to come in with promise of untold riches. Mm. And then it, what it's doing is it's slowly learning and gathering information on us and work to work out. I mean, it, it might not have an end goal. The end goal is just maybe that is the way it is learning and adapting and evolving. So, I, I like I like the idea. I think it's good. I think. Would it, do you think it would work better if it was one, one super dome basically Maybe. lands, and then you? What happens is as you as you progress through, as you finish, as you as you you know complete an area or figure out the puzzles to solve an area, another bit of it then, another chunk Unlocks. of it then opens up, and then that's that's how you do. And maybe you do. Maybe the way you do the episodic storytelling to differentiate is that you make the areas very unique and and sort of themed if that makes sense so you yeah m maybe they could replicate certain environments or maybe they could replicate um maybe they could replicate different styles so for example you know as in different almost like different genres if that makes sense so one of them could be um uh, one of them could be sort of sci-fi one of them could be sort of like I don't know. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm not yeah, quite yeah, sure no, how no, you I know do what you that, mean. But... So it, maybe we do set it to AI then, mm. and then because AI has taken all stuff from storytelling, from stuff from our our history, and it's put melted it in melted it all together into puzzle rooms. Mm. I think the problem we're now left with: what's the story's end? And yeah. also, what do we get? I mean, there's a classic thing: is these puzzles. If we solve them and you get the loot, you can buy skins, you can buy physical appearances. But is there anything mm. else? What's the reason behind wanting all that loot? It's a very good question. Um, I mean, I, sometimes you don't need to overthink it because people do no, want no. really nice skins. People do want, but maybe there's a little, you can add little perks in. So you could have your character. If you buy a certain perk, you can meld six items together rather than five. Or you can, um, or maybe you get one where he's like the person that your oppositions are frozen for five seconds longer, stuff like that. Mm. And to keep it fair, everybody has, it's a bit like, 
um, Call of Duty's cards as well has card systems. So it's similar to that. Everyone has card systems, which are of similar power, but you can just ask for different ones at the start. So you don't get to the center where someone has Uber card that essentially blows someone's head off. So I have a small idea. A small idea. Just, just a small one. A small one. A so little idea. Are you familiar with the the end, the Mass Effect endings? Yes. I am familiar with the endings. fact that everyone's absolutely livid about them all the time. Yes. So um, the, the main three endings, spoilers for anyone who hasn't played them before, but they are quite old. So, you know, go, go and play them. They're great. Is you either destroy the bad guys, you control the bad guys, or you meld with the bad guys. Basically, symbiosis. So it's, it's biological and machine symbiosis. So there's no there's no AI. There's no people. There's yep. just one and the same. What if at the end of every single segment, the dome gifts you gifts you the opportunity to meld in some way right. with the AI that created the dome? In okay. that, so say for example, um, you know, one of them could be that they replace your, they meld your mind with a machine, okay. in that, and and so and so, and and that then gives you certain certain buffs and certain abilities. But oh, I see. So, may... Yeah, you become part of the AI. We we, we need to be so, slightly careful because we did have a game similar to this with Ultimate Team with cards, where you essentially assembled your body. But what you're yeah. saying is this is kind of this is a narrative way of, imp- of creating those perks and those buffs because yes, you're, the AI it, is giving you a gift of abilities. And also maybe it gives you a gift like here is your gift. This is your skin. Yeah. And that is quite, that could be an augmentation because as we said earlier, perhaps that ability to glue together is a suit that you were given when you entered the dome. So you can, mm-hmm. so it, it customizes it for you. Dead space style where you step in, you get yeah. a new suit. And um, But then perhaps there has to be obviously, maybe maybe there's some sort of, Maybe there's some sort of downside, or maybe the downside is is literally the player thinking, would I myself want to take away part of my humanity to I have an idea. become better? Do you know what I mean? Go on. So you know when we were saying that the riches get split or not, depending on mm-hmm. if you get there. If you get there alone, you get a perk card, mm-hmm. which, which narratively, as you say, is this augmenting with the um, machine. Yeah. If you get there as a group... You get cosmetics. So there is a clear defined split. And then narratively, what you can do right at the end, when you've completed, when we've gone through all the episodes, you can get a good ending and a bad ending, depending on how much you augmented yourself with the AI. And essentially you become you your character becomes this becomes the AI and essentially becomes loses their humanity, becomes overseer, or if you become uh, if you get there just with cosmetics on, that it goes, Well, we understand now that you see that humanity is so important, you held your humanity. Mm. rather than becoming machine so it's a kind of good and bad ending maybe less binary than that and you could add more grades of um, elements of gray but i like the idea of just sort of going in and going i want the perks being quite good and going for the perks but then giving you the bad ending so so we're saying so we're saying the idea is that these sort of these gifts are forbidden fruit as it were yes okay yes very much so but but there's a clear definer and then obviously portraying your partner leads Mm. to getting worse endings so yes. as long as people don't obviously you'd hope people don't spoil it but that, that i think that's quite a nice you'd be because if you were an ass to someone the entire way through and then went oh i got the bad end oh i can't kind of deserve that <laughs> yeah no i think that i think that would work yeah i think that's good and we've managed to do that under the half an hour in the end dear lord we have um yes. how have i managed that anyways shall i do a sum up while you you do a sum up while i'll think of i'll think of things so uh, what we have there, dear listeners and viewers, is um, a, a puzzle game um, centered around uh, mechanics of um, it's got co-op focus with episodic storytelling. Um, so the the general narrative is that a an enormous um, supersized dome is going to land um, on Earth with no sort of warning and no explanation. Um, people will go and, and study it and look at it. Uh, and once inside, they will find that, uh, there is a, a series of, um, of puzzles, puzzle rooms, puzzle areas, um, in a, a vast array of variations. Think of any sort of type of puzzle that you can think of, whether that's, you know, physical or, or metaphorical or, you know, imaginative, um, you know, they'll be in this, in this dome. Um, each sort of 
uh, as you finish a, a segment, another segment will open up, which will lead into the sort of the episodic storytelling. Each section will be um, themed in some way, um, potentially by environment or or by sort of general sort of genre type theme. Um, and what you'll do is you'll you'll travel in in pairs. Um, you'll each have some sort of um, almost like a shock collar, as it were, um, and control over each other's over each other's sort of shock collar. Um, you can choose at any point to um, shock the other person in order to try and complete the puzzle yourself, in order to get to the end of that particular episode, in order to get the reward, um, which will probably be um, uh, the the AI that created the dome will reward you with a piece of AI technology. You can mute, fuse with yourself, but lose some of your some of your humanity. Or you can complete the puzzles together, uh, and you can receive certain certain cosmetic upgrades and certain other um, you know potentially tools that you can use um, as you move through the game. And at this point, we have no idea what the what the dome is about, and that will be revealed towards the end. And the game is going to be called Matthew. I have three options. Go on. I'm going to start with uh, uh, my least favorite, which is called just a symbol. It's just done instead of called cooperation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Throw it out. Second option, Machine Heart. Okay. My first and my one. final option, which is probably my favorite option, which is Beyond Humanity. Beyond Humanity. Hmm. Hmm. That could work. I thought of the labyrinth. Yeah, I don't, actually, know, yeah. I don't know if that's too focused on, or the endless labyrinth, or some. This, I, I, I had labyrinth in my head when we were when we were sort of going through it because it's very sort of the human maze, this. the human. You know I mean, this is, it's yeah. No, I know what you mean. That sort of like a top bird's eye thing. Mm. Beyond humanity works, but beyond humanity sounds okay. very sounds very spacey. Sounds like a sci. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like a yeah, beyond a space. space exploration game. Um, I don't know. Is there any? <laughs> it's very hard now because now now. Um. Ooh. Go on. That's brain. your idea, face. You, huh? could, you could call it brain. Brain. B R. Dot A I dot N. So, br- I and well, yes, if you say it phonetically, <laughs> <laughs> you could. It might be a little bit on the nose. Okay, yeah, true, true, true. It's, it's, especially if you're if you're not if 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 you find out that it's AI at the at more towards I the end. I suppose, yeah, it did, you yeah. might be given. Oh, how did you give that away? Over. What was your second one? Uh, machine Heart. Machine heart. Hmm. Sort of brings too many robots to mind, though. I'm not sure if I yeah, like it. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, I, I, like wanted to labyr- get... I like the labyrinth. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the labyrinth. I'm oh, calling it the labyrinth. Called one the labyrinth yet. That's true, actually. It's quite a, it's quite a good name. Should we go the, the labyrinth? labyrinth? We'll go with the labyrinth. You win. Ah, it's not a competition, but it is a competition, I won. Yes, and you won. Um... <laughs> So, listeners, viewers, that is the Labyrinth coming to all consoles and uh, PCs at some point in the future. <laughs> if they um, ever pull their finger out. Yes. Um, we dearly hope that you enjoyed that particular episode. Um, again, we managed to waffle over half an hour. Uh, we usually Beautiful. do. Um, please do um, like and subscribe if you're watching um on youtube um please do subscribe um on any wherever you get your podcast and please do write any comments if you would like us to take on any particular um if you Shut want off. to build build a certain build a certain game that you would like to see just throw in some genres and mechanics and stuff and we will we will endeavor to make it for you in in slightly over half an hour <laughs> um but in the meantime uh thank you for listening and watching i have been scott and I have been Matt. He has. He always is Matt. Um, one day we should we should swap. Um, I, I think I did. I think I remember I said one day I said I have been Scott to throw you oh, off. Oh yes, no, you, you did. Just stared you? back at me as I, if I all, everything it was lost. Everything was lost. Um, but yes, in the meantime, um, have uh, have have a good week and uh, keep on blending. Bye bye now. Farewell. Farewell.